The land explored by our ancestors extends from the Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition, Trails of Nomads, continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. A group of scientists led by Pilgrim of the 21st century, Sapari Skakov, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. Today's Trails of Nomads episode presents Why were the Mamluks who came to Egypt as slaves considered to be from Bahri dynasty? What documents confirm that the first woman ruler in the history of the Arab states, Shajar al-Dur, was of Kipchak origin? How did the Sultans, Kutuz, and Baibars save the Muslim world from a formidable enemy? The Greek historian Herodotus in ancient times called Egypt the gift of the Nile and the locals called it the river that gives life. One of the oldest human civilizations has appeared here. Even then, Egypt was known as a prosperous state. Today, most of the population is also concentrated in the valley of this powerful waterway. People are attracted not only by fertile soil, but also by its rich cultural heritage. This is truly a national treasure that continues to benefit to this day. Millions of tourists from all over the world come to see the unique monuments of antiquity. Natives of the Great Steppe, the Kipchak Sultans, also contributed to their construction. <laughs> Our ancestors held power in Egypt for 132 years. 25 sultans ruled the country, including Baibars, Kalayun, Muhammad Khalil Hassan sultans, and many others. Each of them left an indelible mark in the history of this country. They built unique facilities, majestic mosques, fortresses, bridges, and dams. Today, these architectural monuments attract the attention of many tourists. And this is very important because now there is a lot of competition in the tourism. In many countries, including Egypt, tourism is one of the main sectors of the economy. <laughs> Kazakh people associate Egypt with the name of Sultan Baibars, although before and after him there were other ancestors who also ruled this country and contributed to its development. The life and work of these prominent personalities remain a mystery. The participants of the Trails of Nomads scientific expedition first unveiled the unexplored pages of history. While working in Egypt, Kazakh scientists managed to find the mausoleum of another famous ancestor, Shajar al-Dur, the first in the history of Egypt and the second in the Muslim world woman ruler of the state. In 1250, she became the Sultan of Egypt. The history of the Mamluks begins with this year. <laughs> We are now in the mausoleum of Shajar al-Dur. This is the first female sultan of the Kipchak dynasty. In general, there are two Kipchak women who were rulers and were given the title of sultan. In 1236 in India, it was Razia Sultan, and the second is the ruler of Egypt, Sultan Shajar al-Dur. From 1171 to 1250, Egypt was ruled by the Ayyubid dynasty. Shajar al-Dur Sultan interrupted their reign. Of course, it would be difficult for her to ascend the throne without support. In the time of Ayyubids, a special army was formed in the country. It included mercenaries who were called Mamluks. Subsequently, they became the support for Shajar al-Dur. By the way, the ruler herself also once appeared in Egypt as a legionnaire. Then the ruler in the country was as salih Ayyub, the grandson of Salah ad-Din the liberator of Palestine from the Crusaders. He was the eighth ruler of the Ayyubid dynasty. As Salih Ayyub was in constant feud with his relatives, and in this confrontation, he almost always lost. The ruler of Egypt was tortured by anger and annoyance. And then Shajar al-Dur came to support him and gave very valuable advice. This was a very 
Shajar al-Dora was a very smart woman. She suggested As Salih Ayub to buy brave boys, adolescents, youths in Central Asia. The Sultan took this advice. Moreover, he personally participated in their upbringing and generally treated them as his children. The new Egyptians highly appreciated this. Increased demand for young Kipchak warriors stimulated the Mongol invaders. They actively sold their Kipchak prisoners of war. Active trade and live goods was in Europe, North Africa, South Asia and the Middle East. As a result, special units began to appear in different parts of the world and countries. These were separate units of the guards, who subordinated directly to the rulers. For example, in India they were called Guliam, in Egypt they were Mamluks. In 1240, the Sultan from the Ayyubi dynasty Al Malik as Sali II built a special military camp for the Mamluk on the Nile coast. The Kipchaks who lived there began to be called immigrants from the Bari dynasty because the Egyptians called Nile as Bari, which means sea. The Mamluk Corps, which was formed later, partially consisted of soldiers who retreated during the battle with the Mongols. Basically, it was the surviving part of the Khwarazm Shah troops, which were headed by Kutuz. Kutuz is a cousin of the son of Jalal ad Din Khwarazm Shah, Manguberdi. In the army of Khwarazm Shah, there were always Kipchaks, Turkmens, and many other representatives of Turkic tribes. They were very brave warriors. All Egyptians' rulers subsequently sought to recruit Turks, especially Kipchaks, into the ranks of their armies. Thus, the Mamluk Corps was formed. It was a separate army. A result, as we know, the Mamluks, that is, the Kipchaks, took power in Egypt into their own hands. As a result of numerous uh, litigations with relatives, As Salih Ayub was imprisoned. Most of all, this was affected by a quarrel with his brother in 1239. Together with As Salih, his subjects were taken into custody, the legionary Shajar al Dur and the head of the guard Baibars. After his release, Al Salih Ayub married Shajar al Dur. They had a son named Halil, but he did not live long. <laughs> Shajar al Dur is the wife of As Salih Ayyub. After the death of the Sultan, his eldest son Turan Shah came to power, but he soon died. Then all the Kipchak emirs, having gathered for council, elected Shajar al Dur as ruler. She was of noble Khan origin. Even during the reign of her husband, Sultan As Salih Ayyub Shajar al Dur actively participated in the government. She had a special status of Um Khalil, which meant mother of the heir Khalil. She had the right to issue decrees on his behalf and sign important documents. In 1249, the French king Louis IX outfitted a crusade and attacked Egypt. At that time, As Salih Ayyub died as a result of a serious illness. However, Shajar al Dur kept it in secret. She announced that due to Lord's illness, the throne Rome would be taken by his oldest son from the first wife, Turan Shah. The next step was the implementation of a clear plan to repulse the enemy. The main role in it was assigned to an experienced strategist and military leader, Baibars. As a result of the battle near the city of Al Mansur, the army of Louis was defeated. The brother of the French king, Robert Artois, was killed in the battle. The Arab historian Al Makrizi, who lived in the 14th 15th centuries, wrote about one and a half thousand crusaders fell on the battlefield. The Egyptian army won thanks to the skillful actions of such military leaders as Baibars, Aibak, Kalaun, and Aktai. This was the first military success of the Kipchak Mamluks, who then set out to build a powerful state. After this battle, the fame of Egypt and the Mamluks spread throughout the world. If not for the outstanding Kipchak commanders, Egypt would be doomed to be captured by the Crusaders or the Mongol conquerors. Kazakhs have a saying, iron will only bend iron. The Kipchaks indeed were as strong as iron and therefore were able to withstand the enemies who kept the whole world in fear. The French king intended to conquer Egypt and was almost there. He ordered his brother Robert Artois to surround the palace of the Sultan. In turn, Shajar al Dur ordered to strengthen the defense, and then the enemy was exhausted, hit a blow. Baibars performed the order. Robert Artois was killed, and Louis was captured.
The Crusades threatened not only Egypt but the entire Muslim world. Therefore, the victory of the Mamluks was important for all adherents of Islam. It is no coincidence that Shajar al-Dur was awarded the title of Asmat ad-Din during her lifetime, which means protector of religion. Today, the Egyptian people with special gratitude recall the feat of the Kipchak Mamluks. They honor and respect their descendants, the Kazakhs, one of the striking examples of the Egyptians studying at Kazakh history, culture, and literature. So the outstanding work of Ilyas Yassin Berlin the Nomads trilogy was translated into Arabic. The author of the translation is Professor of Aswan University, Dr. Mohammed Riyad. Now I plan to translate another work of Ilyas Yes in Berlin, the trilogy The Golden Horde. The main goal of my work is, of course, to enable Arab readers to get to know the culture of the ancestors of the Kazakhs, who once saved not only Egypt, but many other Muslim countries from a formidable enemy. After the victory over the Crusaders and the capture of the French King Louis IX, the struggle for power began within the Egyptian state. Turan Shah, who ascended the throne, not by the will of his father, as Sali Ayyub, but thanks to the sharp mind of Shajar al-Dur, began to purge his entourage after the battles. First of all, it was directed against the Mamluk leaders. This, of course, provoked a response from Shajar al-Dur and other Kipchaks. Soon, Turan Shah was killed and the history of the Ayyub dynasty ended. Power in Egypt passed into the hands of the wise Shajar al-Dur. Unfortunately, Shajar al-Dur ruled Egypt not for long, but most importantly, she was the first Sultan ruler of the Kipchak dynasty, moreover, a female ruler. Shajar al-Dur is an outstanding personality who has made a huge contribution to the development of Egypt. She was the founder of the Mint, where silver and gold tenge were minted. This was an important event not only for Egypt, but also for all Islamic countries. Indeed, at that time, not one of the Muslim women was awarded the title of Sultan and did not mint coins on her behalf. Some of them have survived and are stored in the British Museum. She wanted to take official permission from the Muslim Caliph in Iraq to rule in Egypt. The Caliph, having learned of the intention, was indignant. With the words, is there not a single man left in Egypt to lead the country? He decided to send his reliable person to this post. At this time, Shajar al-Dur married one of the Mamluk leaders. Then in Egypt, there were two authoritative military leaders. One of them was the mentor of Baybars Aktai. Another was the mentor of Kutuz Is al-Din Aybak. Shajar al-Dur chose the most suitable option for herself and became the wife of Iz al-Din Aybak. During the reign of Shajar al-Dur Sultan, Iz al-Din Aybak served as Atabek, a senior official. In 1250, after the marriage, Shajar al-Dur transferred the throne to her husband. Iz al-Din Aybak ruled the country until 1257. At the beginning of his reign, he repeatedly rebuffed the sultans from the Ayyubi dynasty from Syria, who tried to overthrow. Later, Egypt witnessed uprisings and he easily managed to crush them. It is worth noting that this is a great merit of the military leader Aktai, then Sultan Aybak. The fame of Aktai spread quickly, and then the ruler, seeing him as an opponent, ordered to kill him. Such an unexpected turn prompted Aktai's comrades in arms, Baybars and Kulayun, to leave to Syria with the Mamluk crew. In turn, Aybak married the daughter of Emir Mosul Badr al-Din Lulu to strengthen his power. Thus, powerful allied support was ensured. Shajar al-Dur before marrying Iz al-Din Aybak said one condition to him. You have to divorce your wife and not marry anyone else, she said. Aybag agreed, but did not keep his word. Shajar al-Dur did not forgive him for this. She bribed one of the close associates of the ruler and ordered to kill him. According to the manuscripts of historians, Iz al-Din Aybak was killed on April 10, 1257. After 18 days, Shajar al-Dur herself died. 
Then the 15-year-old son of Ibak, Al-Mansur Ali, ascended the throne and ruled until 1259. But in fact, the state was governed by a regent named Sanjar al halabi Participants in the scientific expedition managed to find the grave of Sanjar al halabi who was an emir and one of the illustrious Mamluk military commanders. He, along with Sultan Baibars, passed the difficult path of the struggle for freedom, held high positions in the administration of Damascus and Aleppo. During the period when Al-Mansur Ali was in power, the Mongols came to Egypt and offered to surrender the country without bloodshed. The negotiators made it clear that in case of disagreement, there would be no mercy. At that time, Al-Mansur Ali was only 15 years old. At this time, Qutuz removed him from the throne and proclaimed himself the Sultan of Egypt. Saif Adin Qutuz was the chief emir during the reign of Aibak. That is, he already then actively participated in the decision of important state affairs. And in 1259, he received the title of Al-Malik Al-Mustafar, which means the Sultan winner. However, he ruled Egypt for only a year. He died on October the 24th, 1260. Under his reign, the Mamluks united again. Sultan Baibars returned from Syria. Kutuz killed Aktai, who was a mentor to Baibars. That is why Baibars, feeling imminent danger, left Egypt and went to Syria. However, after a while, Kutuz, in connection with the impending threat from the Mongol invaders, asked Baibars to return to the country. In 1259, grandson of Genghis Khan, Kublai, invaded Syria and went to Egypt. In September 1260, in the Palestinian village of Ain Jalut, Mamluks and Mongols army met. The army of the Mongolian commander Ket Bubka was comparable small, 10,000 warriors. Kutu's army accounted for approximately 40,000. According to the tactics of the commander of the Egyptian army Baibars, the Mamluks wedged into the ranks of the Mongols and dividing the enemy army into two parts and began to mercilessly destroy them. Kedbuga fought to the last and died on the battlefield. Indeed, at that time the Mongols were considered the most dangerous opponents, and no one alone without allies dared to oppose them. It is no coincidence that the Mamluks also sought support before the start of the battle. In 1959, Kutuz and Baibars repeatedly tried to establish allied relations with the Deshta Kipchak sultans. It should be noted that Kutuz and Berke are the grandson of Genghis Khan. They are cousins. And even despite such close family ties, they didn't support each other. And after the death of Kutuz, Baibars, becoming a sultan, made attempts to establish ties with rulers from his native steppes. After the Battle of Ain Jalut, the whole world learned about the Kipchak Mamluks, since the Mongols were defeated for the first time in history. The danger of enslavement by the latter then threatened many countries. After the crushing blow from the Mamluks, the myth of the invincibility of the Mongol army was dispelled. The Mongol commander, Kulagu, tried several times to resume the campaign, but he did not fulfill his plans. Thus, it was thanks to the Kipchaks that Egypt was preserved and the danger hanging over the entire Muslim world passed. The Mamluks expanded their territories up to the Euphrates. Their state has become one of the largest in the Middle East. For over a hundred years, the Kipchak sultans have influenced all Muslim countries. First of all, they were defenders of religion. The high position, grandeur and status of the Kipchak sultans allowed them annually, according to the traditions of that time, to change the black material lined with gold in the most important Muslim shrine, the Kaaba. In 1260, the world-famous Sultan Baibars came to power in Egypt. The period of his reign was quite fertile for the entire Muslim civilization, and for Egypt, this period can generally be called the Golden Time. That is, the country under his leadership was booming and flourishing. Under him, the Kipchak culture spread widely in Egypt. Some facts indicate that people placed yurts around the pyramids, milked mares, and drank kumis. And now the participants of the Trails of Nomads scientific expedition have documented evidence of all these events. Watch the next episode to learn more about it.